Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Digital Making at Home live stream. Uh, I'm Mr C as always and I'm here with my partner in crime Zach. Hi. And uh, we're coming to you from a slightly different location again this week. Last week I was up in the Peaks District, the lovely Peaks National Park uh, in the United Kingdom. But here we're in Fen Drayton, we're in a village just outside of Cambridge, aren't we? Yep. Yeah, we're here for another week, aren't we? Yeah. Has it been good so far? Yeah. Yeah? Fun. You went for a big walk yesterday, didn't you? Where'd you go? We went like to a bird watching place yeah. where the, like eagles and kestrels like flew by trying to attack pigeons. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Did they get any pigeons? Um, no, but we did see like loads of kestrels and stuff. That's cool. You like birds of prey, don't you? Yeah. You're a big fan. Yeah, cool. So uh, this week, everybody, we're here with Digital Making at Home, and our theme is Make It Colourful. So you might have seen the videos on demand that we've released this week with Mark and Jimmy, and they do some really excellent work on the Sense Hat, which is a really nice little add-on board for your Raspberry Pi, and we get it to do random sparkles. So we get all the lights on the front of your Sense Hat to come on and sparkle. But you can also do it online if you don't have a Sense Hat and a Raspberry Pi. You can jump onto the emulator in Trinket, which is a really cool online platform for doing your code. And you can use that to make imaginary light sparkle on your screen, which is another really nice little project. Should you do that one later? You haven't done that one yet, have you? That's Python. You're not so big on Python yet. I'm a big more of a Scratch fan. I've done Python once before. Yeah, we did Mission Zero, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. So be a bit more of a Scratch fan, aren't you? And we'll do some more Scratch today, won't we, a bit later on. Do you want to tell everyone what our project is later when we do the Scratch stuff? What does it do? We, like, we do Scratch to make like patterns pop up on our screen, like you do shapes and stuff to make, like, like lots of them come to make different patterns and stuff like that. It's cool, isn't it? It's good fun. We had good fun playing around with it earlier, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll show everybody how you did that with your excellent pattern making stuff with the Pattern Pen project. Um, and we've also got a really impressive guest this week. We've got the CEO of the Raspberry Pi Foundation coming on with us to have a chat, uh, Philip Colligan. He's the guy who makes all the magic happen at Raspberry Pi Foundation and makes all the big decisions and tells all the people who work at the foundation where we're going and what we're doing. And so we've got some really great questions to ask him this week. So we'll see if he's there in the back room. Philip, are you there? I am here. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mark. Hello, Zach. How are you doing? Well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, the sun is not shining in Cambridge, sadly. Um, but it's okay. I'm having a good day. Oh, that's good. That's important, I guess. It's not shining here either, is it? No. It's a bit grey outside. Should we still go for a walk later if it's raining? Yeah. Yeah, we'll still go for our walk, I think. Do you get out of the house much, Philip, at the moment? Yeah, we yeah I do get out a little bit. Um, at the moment, my son, who Dylan, who's twelve, and I are doing couch to five k. Um, so we've got a couch to five k run today. Um, it's one of our projects over the summer. Uh, we're going to try and get ourselves up to a, a good five kilometre time by the end of August. And so does that mean you start at a very small run or very like sort of a staggered run? That's right. You start you start with a little bit of walking, a little bit of running, and you build up over the weeks. It's very structured, completely free, super easy to do. Loads of people are doing it around the UK uh, at the moment. Brilliant. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And you get up to 5K in the end, like a solid 5K nonstop. Yeah, 5K nine run. weeks. The idea is the nine weeks, anybody should be able, everybody should be able to get uh, to a solid 5K by the end of nine weeks. So that's our challenge. It's been a few years since I've run a 5K, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. I haven't run a 5K since I was a teenager, I think. It's just... <laughs> I don't no, well, there you go. It. There you go. You should get involved. <laughs> should pick it up. Should we do that? Yeah. Catch the 5K. I've done it with mum. Yeah, I know. I know you did it with mum. Yeah, you probably, like, leave me breathless, I think. You just disappear <laughs> off over the horizon. Um, so that, oh, thanks for coming on this week, Philip. It's really great to have you. Um, I know one of the things that I'd like to talk about, and something that Zach was wondering about as well, like, is we know that the Raspberry Pi itself is that amazing computer that's about this big and you can embed it in everything and people use it all over the world to make incredible stuff. Yeah. But the Raspberry Pi Foundation is actually a lot more than just the little gadget that we make. I mean, I know there's a bit of a split and a bit of a difference. Like, could you explain to us as the captain of the good ship Raspberry Pi, like sure. exactly what the difference is between the gadget and the foundation? Yeah, for sure. So um, Raspberry Pi Foundation is a charity. So it's a nonprofit based in the UK. And we have this mission to help young people particularly, but everybody all over the world learn how to create with technology. So that's our mission. That's what we're here for. And we were founded originally by Eben, who I know has been on uh, one of your previous shows, and, and a group of uh, his friends here in Cambridge uh, with that mission. And their first idea was we'll make the Raspberry Pi computer. And that's how we'll pursue that mission. We'll 
will will excite a generation of young people to get into programming, learn how to create with technology through the Raspberry Pi device. And actually what's happened, and I've just, uh, just hit my five year anniversary here at the foundation, what's happened over the last five years is we've expanded our view of how we can achieve that mission. So we now do four things. So the first thing we do is we help schools introduce computing and digital skills into the curriculum. We do that by training teachers and by creating free resources. We help young people um, have opportunities to learn how to create with technology. So lots of that is in clubs like Code Clubs and Coda Dojos. Uh, it's also through initiatives like this one where we help young people learn at home through free educational resources translated into lots of languages. We do research, so we try to understand how best to help young people learn these skills. And then we still do the computer, right? So we still do Raspberry Pi computers. Um, in technical terms, the, the foundation is uh, the charity and we own the trading company. So Raspberry Pi computers are made by uh, a company that Eben uh, leads. And I guess the final thing to say is we are passionate about Raspberry Pi computers here at the foundation. I think everyone should own at least 10. I think it's shocking that everyone doesn't own 10. But we you don't need to have a Raspberry Pi computer to get involved in the foundation's educational activities. You can use a PC, a Mac, or any other uh, piece of technology you've got lying around. It's an amazing world of digital tech, and we, we just want to uh, help young people learn how to piece it all together and, and, and bring their ideas to life. That's cool, and that's what we've been doing at home, isn't it? We've been doing a lot more coding lately, yeah? And do you feel you're starting to get a grip on that sort of stuff? Because we always use the Raspberry Pi project site, don't we, to help you learn yeah. stuff, yeah? And you like that site? What is it that you find, like, helpful about doing the projects on that site when we work through them like it it helps me a lot like for like i'm still not like amazing at scratch i'm like okay i still need like some instructions to help me go on with like with all my scratch mm -hmm. because i still find well i don't find it hard but i find I find it not as easy without instructions. And the instructions on the website are sort of like nice and laid out for you to follow, and we yeah. do that quite often, don't we? You find that really handy with the tick boxes and stuff. So would you say that we're sort of doing well for young people like you, helping them learn stuff with code? Yeah, awesome. That's cool. From the from the horse's mouth, plus you can hear it right here. Thank you, sir. Um, and so, I mean, I know before you were here at Raspberry Pi Foundation, you were across at Nesta, which is like the innovation foundation. And I mean, how... How do you feel that your time at Nesta equates to your time at Raspberry Pi? Did it help set you up? Like, is it? Do you think they're similar in their goals between Nesta and the Raspberry Pi Foundation? Yeah, so Nesta, uh, its full name is the National Endowment for Science, Technology and the Arts. So it's an organization that's um, a wonderful place that's focused on bringing innovation and technology to improve people's lives in a wide variety of ways. Um, uh, and it was a great privilege to work there. One of the things that I worked on at Nesta was this challenge around digital skills and computing. And Nesta played a role in helping the UK government change the curriculum. Um, and we also got to work with fabulous organizations like Code Club, which now, of course, are part of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And um, so I did quite a lot of work at Nesta around um, this particular area of, of computing, digital skills, digital making. And um, so that certainly helped. It felt like a natural step in many ways, leaving Nesta to join Raspberry Pi. The other thing we did at Nesta, which has really helped me, I think, is uh, we invested a lot in organizations. So we tried to figure out how do you make an organization grow? How do you uh, structure it? How do you bring the right talent in? How do you get the money in? How do you build communities? And I got to work with an amazing group of organizations when I was there. So I could just learn all of their lessons. And uh, the, lots of that learning is what's helping uh, me do my job well, I think, or the bits that I do well here at Raspberry Pi. Awesome. And so you've been here five years now. Like that's quite a milestone. Five years this week. Uh, it was my my five anniversary. I don't know quite how you say that on Monday. Um, uh, and what an incredible five years it's been. Um, yeah, real privilege. Best job what, in the world. What is it that makes it the best job in the world? What What is it that you like working about the Raspberry Five, the, the foundation? Sorry, what is it about it? So, I mean, the first thing's the mission. Um, so I. I really genuinely deeply believe that every young person should have the opportunity to learn how to create with technology, right? Uh, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what your background, what your parents do for a living, um, I just feel that um, in order to solve some of these huge problems and inequalities that we're facing uh, as a planet, as a society, we need 
all of the brains, all of the ingenuity unleashed. And we can do that by helping young people anywhere in the world learn how to create with technology. It's just such a, uh, uh, such a powerful force for good, I think. So that's, that's one thing. The mission gets me out of bed in the morning, gets me excited. I love the team. You know, we, you know this. We have such a special group of people um, uh, that work with us, not just in the organization, but in the wider community. Our volunteers and educators just come with the right spirit. They're, they're committed. They work incredibly hard because they care about it. Uh, so that combination of the, 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 the purpose and the team. And then finally, you know, look, kids like Zach, you know, um, the highlight of my job by far by some country mile actually, is when I get to spend time with young digital makers and, and hear about the awesome things they're doing. Yeah, no, I agree. Like hanging out with young kids and seeing the, the innovation and you know the creativity that they bring to it. If you can give them those tools and the toolkits to produce whatever they can come up with, then the stuff yeah. they can come up with is powerful, right? And I know yeah. we've just had Coolest Projects finish and a lot of the judging for that is pretty much over now. Um, I mean, what do you think inspires so many young people when it comes to coolest projects what is it about coolest projects that sort of captures that imagination and innovation and that, like drives them forward yeah well i think it's different things for different kids i think some of them just you know that they they they're given these incredible tools like zach was describing you learn kind of how to use a tool like scratch and then you're able we use this phrase don't we in the foundation able to bring their ideas to life instantiate them make them appear on a screen or in the physical world and i think that's the most powerful thing um i think one of the other things about the this year's entries for coolest projects and we've certainly seen it before but this year really struck me is so many of the projects are about benefiting other people they are about kids who feel and care about problems that other people are experiencing and they're thinking about how they can use technology to make those problems better and I think that is a very powerful thing to see and all the projects of course are online at the moment we have a showcase and you can browse them and I have been spending far too many of my evenings going through playing the scratch games looking at the videos and so on it's a real treat yeah, there's some amazing stuff coming through. And I noticed as well this year, for the first time, we've had some really far-reaching places coming in, like countries like Iraq and Israel have been producing a lot of really amazing entries. Um, and that's been really amazing to see. Like, I think the idea that you know, a lot of you know, maybe cynical old people would think that this situation hasn't caused the world to come together. But when you look at stuff like Coolest Project and you see how many of them are about helping others and using your talents to push other people's lives and make other people's lives better, I think it's really inspiring to look at. And I too have been wasting a lot of time on Coolest Project's website. Just I think 100%. Out. I mean, the other thing though, just, just on that point about this, the global nature of it, is I think one of the other things that brings young people to code clubs, code dojos, to Coolest Project is this sense of community, right? We all like to be um, in groups. We, you know, we're social animals. And I think what's very powerful about the internet, uh, and, and you know, certainly amplified by the current circumstances, is that young people are genuinely part of a global community of other young people just like them. Uh, and what I love, my daughter um, uh, enters. She always enters under her mum's name, so that you know there's no no cheating allowed. Um, she entered Coolest Projects, and she loves the fact that her project is featured alongside a kid from Palestine that's made another cool project in in Scratch. And that sense of making the world smaller, I think, is yeah. really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And has that inspired your own personal coding journey? Like, were you a coder before you came to the Raspberry Pi Foundation or a digital maker? Or? So I'm not. I was never a professional. Um, uh, back in the uh, the 80s, um, when I was growing up, uh, was really the I grew up in the first wave of home computing. Um, so the BBC Micro was a thing. Actually, we never had a, a computer at home when I was growing up. We couldn't afford one. Um, but one of my friends uh, who lived just up the road, Gary, had a ZX Spectrum 81, uh, and he and I would spend way too many hours back then. Like what you basically did was got magazines and copied out the code from the magazines. Um, to make your own game, right? And then you could change some of the uh, some of the code uh, to try and make it your own. Often, basically, break it and spend hours trying to debug it. Uh, but I remember those experiences so fondly. Um, for me, I, I was much more into electronics, so I was a lot into music. Um, I particularly used to make disco lights. That was one of the things I used to do when I was younger. And so I had a, a long career which had nothing to do with computing, nothing to do with digital making. And it was actually when my son turned seven. Um, and he got his first Raspberry Pi that I got switched back into it and could see 
um, just <laughs> firstly how far the technology had come on, how the price had just changed to the point where actually price is no longer a barrier to having a powerful computer, and saw the impact it had on him writing his first line of code. And, and over this past five more years, uh, I've really enjoyed getting back into it. I yeah. I'm not making any pretensions. I, I, I'm, I'm, my daughter is definitely better at JavaScript than I am, but I can kind of hold my own a little bit on some basic Python, which I'm quite proud of. And that's another thing I think that I personally love about being at the foundation is like the team is so encouraging, right? And the idea that any progress is amazing progress and that you should always keep striving to be better. And, the, you know, there's no, there's no judgment. There's no sort of like one-upism or anything in the way that we work. It's like everybody wants everyone else to succeed. And I think that's, that's a really powerful thing too. And I think it comes through in the work that we do. What do you think? Yeah, you agree? Yeah. Would you like to ask Philip a couple of questions? I know you've got a couple before I take up all that time. Yeah. Yeah? So we're speaking to the mic, right? What is your favorite Scratch project? Oh. Oh, you mean on the uh, the project site or the favorite that I've ever seen? So I'll, I'll give you, um, uh, oh, oh, that's a great one. So I... I mean, all the classics, you know, rock band and all that sort of stuff I love. But I've got to say this. My favorite Scratch project is my son made a two-player football game in Scratch a couple of years ago. And we still play that. Uh, it's called Blobberball. Um, and I know it's a shared project, so I can definitely get the link so that other people can play it. Uh, but he spent so many hours on that. And like you were saying, Zach, he learned all of those skills by doing projects on the project site on Raspberry Pi. But then what he did in his football game is piece them together. Um, like he learned how to make a scoreboard and he, he learned how to make the controls to move the players around. Um, so it was lovely to see him then take the skills that he'd learned by doing some fairly structured projects and then use those to create something completely original. Awesome. I'll send you a link. Yeah, I'd love to see it, definitely. I think we can share it next week on the live stream, I imagine. Everyone else can have a play at Blobble Ball. It sounds awesome. Yeah. Another one? What is your favorite type of fruit? My favorite type of fruit? Uh, raspberries. I mean, it actually is raspberries. I mean, that sounds so corporate. Uh, but this time of year, I love a good raspberry. Uh, yeah, raspberries or blueberries, I guess. Um, soft summer fruits. Um, yeah, we've got a question, uh, Mark, that's appeared in the text. Do you. Do you don't want to cut across Zach, but do you want do you want me to say anything about that one? Or? Yeah, go ahead. If you know a really good project for beginners, what's well, so what much? what I would say, um, you know, if it's if it's your daughter's first uh, uh, go at coding, Scratch is a great place to start on the Raspberry Pi uh, project site, which we can put the link up. Um, you will find some Scratch beginner courses there. Rock Band is the classic first project that everybody does, but then there's a whole uh, uh, structure that your daughter could follow through. Um, half a dozen uh, projects in each in each season, uh, which are get increasingly advanced and more complicated, and they are a lot of fun. Um, uh, designed by experts and tested by millions. Yep, yep. And we've got a lot of the projects that come on here, the digital making at home stuff we've been releasing over the last few months too. There's a lot of videos, so you can code along as well. If yeah. you're not much into the structured instruction, you can follow yeah. like me and Zach coding or Mark and his son Jimmy. We do a lot of those sort of things. And some of Christina's yeah. videos are just a riot. They're awesome. They are, they are great. They are great. Yeah, yeah, uh, really cool. yeah, Zach, sorry I had a rubbish answer on fruit, but it is true. It's genuinely true. Um, the one thing I wouldn't do, ne never bake a raspberry into a pie is my strongest advice. Uh, they're, really? much better, fr they're much better fresh, I think, than cooked. Okay. What's your favorite fruit? Since so we'll flip it back on you now, what's your favorite fruit? Wait. Ever? Yeah. I do like dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. That's a pretty... Well, that's, that's exotic. A, that's a yeah. <laughs> you do like, we had them when we were in Indonesia, didn't we? Yeah. We got lots of them, didn't we? Because we could buy bags of them for not much and you used to just eat them and end up with purple face. Yeah? All right. <laughs> one, one, one more question for Philip and then I'll steal the last question before we let him go because I know he's really busy. He can't hang around all day with us. Is it true you, you live in your shed? <laughs> so I have spent a lot of time in this shed um, since the pandemic started. Uh, so this is a... Uh, a shed at the bottom of my garden and uh, it has a little gym over there it has my music equipment here it has all my digital making stuff there um, and i have certainly spent a lot of time in this shed in the past 14 weeks but i am allowed out from time to time <laughs> cool i mean I've, the last question i'll get before we let you yeah, go sure. 
busy where you've got a whole bunch of meetings this afternoon. But um, I guess the last thing I'd like to get from you is sort of the question we ask everyone before they sign off with us is, do you have any advice for young makers and coders from your perspective, the person who's in charge of the Raspberry Pi Foundation? You know, what could you offer young people as a bit of advice? So there's, there's, uh, there's a couple. I'm going to give a couple. Um, so one is make the thing, right? No, there is nothing more rewarding. However... Uh, clunky the first version is we have a phrase the first pancake in the foundation however clunky your first version is make the thing bring it to life uh, wire it together program it you know see the thing don't just don't just um, uh, don't just think about it bring it to life uh, the second thing I would say is um, and everybody always says this but it's so true don't give up you know making things with technology whether you're programming or whether you're doing electronics is super hard any project you build is fraught with uh, uh challenges and oh hello do you want to say hello yeah definitely yeah. this is hey. Bethan. say hi <laughs> you're hi. live online <laughs> do you want to say hello to them hey Bethan, how's it going good how you doing what's happening today what are you up to um, I'm going to make banana bread. Oh, lucky. That sounds good. Lucky dad. Is he going to get to eat some or are you going to eat it all yourself? Um, I'll share it. Oh, you're going to share it. That's very generous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. That's cool. Did, did you sneak into the shed? Did dad know you were sneaking up on him or did you manage to get in sneaky before he could spot you? <laughs> Basically sneaking in. <laughs> oh, well done. Zach loves to up on me all the time. He's always sneaking up on me around the house and like, stuff and whack me with foam swords and things like that. <laughs> That's cool. It's nice to see you, kiddo. Hey, you all right? Bye. You doing? Catch you later. Bye. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, that's no, Beth, um, um, uh, where were we? Where were we? Oh, yes, um, she's the, the JavaScript fanatic. Um, uh, where was I? Advice, advice. Yes, yeah, so don't give up. So it's, incre it's incredibly difficult and it can be frustrating, um, but actually that's part of the process. And you learn so much through those moments of uh, frustration and difficulty. And um, one of our summer projects is to make a choose your own adventure game uh, using Python. And um, uh, we're actually following a course, a Raspberry Pi course, the object oriented um, course, which which builds a, a game with number of rooms and you have all sorts of uh, uh, artifacts that you can collect and so on. But uh, I'm having some real struggles with that at the moment. But I keep telling myself, don't give up. This is a process. And then if I could have just one, one more, which is this sense of community, right? Um, there are uh, there's a world of young people out there who like you, like Zach, like Beth and like other kids um, who are doing amazing things and by far the best lessons, the best learning experiences come from seeing what they've done, hearing about the lessons they've had and being inspired by their projects. So make sure you're part of the community, I think. Definitely. Yeah, no, I agree. That's brilliant. Thanks for that. That's really inspiring advice as well. So um, should we say goodbye to Philip? We'll let him crack on with all his meetings because I know he's non-stop at the moment. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming along, Philip. It was really thank great. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for everything well, you do. And I'll, I'll watch the video later uh, and we'll do some code along with your uh, the recording of the live stream later. I look forward to oh, it. Oh, brilliant. Awesome. All right. Cool. All right. We'll catch you later. Thanks very much. Bye. That was cool, right? Talks to the big boss man. Yeah, I like your questions. I could have predicted he was going to say raspberries, though. I wasn't sure whether he would or he wouldn't he, like deliberately avoid it, but it was good. Yeah. I felt I felt the honesty come through about raspberries being his favorite fruit, despite the fact that he works for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And dragon fruit, that's obscure, man. Do you remember having a massively purple face after eating that dragon fruit? I think we got photos of it. It's pretty funny. So should we crack on with our Scratch project? Yeah? So what we'll do is we'll open up a new Scratch project, everybody. So if you just flick to a brand new Scratch project, uh, like this one here. So I'll pass over to Zach so that he can drive now, just like we do on all our other videos, bud. So here you go. And what we're going to do today, everyone, with the project is we're going to make the pattern pen. So the pattern pen, well, do you want to explain what pattern pen does? We explained it a little bit briefly, but do you want to just like give everybody a rundown so they know exactly what it is they'll be making? So we're basically going to make like, we're going to make a shape <laughs> and it's gonna be like it's gonna make like loads of them, and it's gonna make them in certain places. So it's gonna make one there and start like making loads in a circle. Like I made, like I made a star, mm -hmm. which kept spinning, and it made like a spiral shape. Mm -hmm. 
So it, like, it draws lines, doesn't it, right? Yeah. So we sort of like use movement, we use the motion blocks to get it to draw a line and turn a certain number of degrees and draw another line and turn it and draw all these different lines, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So um, should we start? Should we crack on? Yeah, okay. So yeah. should we keep the scratch cat because we can hide him, can't we? Because yeah. we're not, we don't like the cat so much, do we? Find him? Yeah. So you drive, man. Take, take the mouse. And uh, what we'll do, the first thing we'll do is we'll make the cat size, we'll make it really small. So that when we can start drawing our patterns, the sprite doesn't hit the edge, even if it's hidden. So just make it like one. Yeah, make it tiny. Cool, and there we go. So you can see we've taken our sprite and we've made it really small because the project we're about to do involves moving the sprite around the screen and leaving a coloured trail behind wherever it goes. And so if we have a big sprite, it will touch the edges really soon. And we don't really want it to be touching the edges all the time. We kind of want to keep our sprite nice and small. And then that way, when we're doing our code, it doesn't notice that it's touching the edges so much. So next thing we want to do, Zaki, is let's put in a when green flag clicked, I think. We'll start with the green flag because we like that, don't we? It's the best way to start all our projects off. And then what we need it to do is in the project instructions, it tells you to sort of like have your cursor go to here, move 50 steps and turn. But we can sort of skip that, I think, and crack straight into the interesting stuff today. So add the pen extension, man. Talk everyone through how you add that extension. So down in the bottom left corner, you, you'll see like two scratch connections with a plus sign. You tap that and it'll pop up like this. And you see one which says pen, which has a picture of a pen and a rainbow line. I mean, you tap on it and all of these pop up. Nice. So it brings us all the new pen blocks in, doesn't it? We add that pen extension. That allows us to draw the cool, crazy lines on the screen, yeah? So let's start with a really simple one, right? So when we click the green flag, do we want it to go, we want it to put pen down, right? But we, do we want it to start in the middle of our screen? Like, what do you want to do with it, man? Make it start in the middle. Start in the center. So let's tell it to do that first, eh? So we go to our motion blocks and we grab a go to zero, zero and we'll bring that in. So that means that whenever we click the green flag, our sprite is going to move straight into the middle of the screen. It's going to start drawing pictures from the center of our screen. And then what do we want it to do? Move 10 steps. Yeah. And turn certain amount of degrees. Okay, so it's going to move and then it's going to turn, right? And so we can change those numbers in just a little while, but what have we forgotten to slide in? Because it's not going to draw any lines at the moment. Our pen. So let's go to our pen box. Pen down, pop that in under go to, because we want it to go to the middle before it pops the pen down. So if you just click the green flag and show everybody what we've got. Okay, so you can see here that it's sort of moved, it's gone 10 steps. Change to number 10, let's see if we can do something a bit bigger. 50 steps, cool, so now click the green flag. Okay, so now it's gone 50 steps and it's turned another 15 degrees. So if you click it again, it's gonna draw another line 15 degrees around, we can just keep clicking it and it's gonna draw a line every 15 degrees for us that is 50 steps long. Cool, we're on our way, we started, right? So how do we get rid of all that? Do you remember what could we do to make sure that we can clear off everything in our screen? Erase all. Yep, and what should we connect that to, do you reckon? Spacebar. Yeah, connect it to the spacebar, I reckon. So when space key is pressed, erase all. So show everybody what happens. Bam. So now we've got these two blocks connected. Whenever Zach presses the space bar, it will clean his board for him. It will wipe the board clean so that we can start all over again. So let's start drawing some funky patterns, shall we? Yeah? All right, that's your favorite. So how should we do that? What should we have to set off our funky pattern? Like we can set them to different things, right? So what should we do? We should, like if you want it, instead of like not clicking it all the time, you just get a forever, wrap it around all all of the code. Okay, go on, try that, let's see what happens. What happens when we do that and we click the green flag? And it's just gonna keep drawing those lines forever, isn't it? Yeah, cool, so stop it. Hit spacebar, we'll clear everything out. So now let's make a new script altogether. Let's grab a new event, right? What should we use for our new event? So we don't wanna try and click on our tiny cat all the time. What could we use instead to make things happen? Cool, when key pressed, awesome. So what key should we get it to do? We've got already oh. used space. We use arrow keys because they're convenient, right? They're at the top. So when the up arrow key is pressed, what do you want it to do? Change colors. Yeah, so we can have it change colors, but let's let's do the basic shape first. We'll add the color changing in a second. So what should the first thing be that it does? When we click it and start a new pattern. A pattern and like different patterns. Okay, so what, what would we have it do to draw those patterns? 
Yeah. Um, pen down? Yeah, definitely, because it's got to have pen down in order to draw. And then what do we want it to draw? So it's got to do some moving now that the pen is down. So we put the pen down on the page, and then we want it to move in different ways, don't we? So why don't we get it to do some motion blocks? Turn. Yeah, so you can just duplicate those if you want to. Drag them across. Awesome. We could do a different number. We could do a different number, yeah. So I reckon, for my money, you should do a number that's bigger than 90, and then you'll start drawing some really cool geometric shapes, right? Because 90 degrees is a perfect right angle, isn't it? It's the corner on a square. So if we do it all 90s, it will just draw square for yeah, us all the time. I remember, like, on the one we did in the living room, mm -hmm. we did, I did, like, 76, and mm -hmm. it looks really cool. Okay, so let's try that. So what happens when you push the up arrow down? Right, and it's starting to repeat. Right, so we can keep pushing up and it keeps drawing those lines for us. And we can see it's starting to trace over itself a little bit now. Cool, that's cool. So what's next? What's the next thing we can do to that pattern so that you don't have to keep pushing up arrow all the time? Oh, he's gonna get to go forever, yeah, cool. Or we could do like a repeat. We could go and do a repeat. Let's leave it forever. Forever's pretty cool. So when you push the up arrow, what's going to happen now? Oh, you click the green flag and so now it's running two scripts at the same time, which is why it's doing that freaky thing. So if you stop it, push space. So now just push the up arrow. Cool, and it's going to colour in our pattern there. It's going to now start right over itself. You can see it's drawn a bit of a ring. So that's pretty cool. It's doing that. What could we do to make that ring be a little bit more apparent, a bit easier to see? How would we make it so that it was bigger and a bit more spread out? Make it like get bigger every time. We could do that, but let's keep it. Let's keep it all um, uniform at this time. What what part of our script do we need to change in order to make it so that the circle is a little bit bigger? How do we make everything move a bit further away from everything else? Step. Yeah, change the steps, make it a bit bigger. I reckon go for 100 and see what it looks like. Because remember, when you're working with Scratch, you can do basically anything you like and then change the numbers until it's exactly the way you want it, right? And as we move on, everybody, Zach's going to show you how we can put things in there that will change the number for you as it goes up to make some really awesome changing patterns. So push your up arrow. There we go. It's a bit bigger now. We can see it a bit easier on the screen. It's just going to keep drawing those patterns for us. Cool. So, you've got one that draws rings now. So when you push space, it clears everything, doesn't it? And then it's, but it's still drawing. So we push space, it clears it, and it just keeps on drawing. So what would you like to add to that now to make it look a little bit different? Or do you want to make a whole brand new one? Or should we make this one a bit more freaky? Make this one a bit more freaky. Yeah, you love doing that. Your favorite fine-tuning stuff. Okay, so what could we do to it? Because we know we've got the pen down. We know that it's going to start drawing that ring for us. How can we make it a little more interesting? What else could we add to that script? What could we have it do next? Have it make it like not stay in the same place, like get bigger or get smaller, like the shape as it's going. Okay, so let's. So you want it to change the size of the shape as it goes on, so the shape continually gets bigger. Yeah, until it hits the, until it hits like the top of the screen and then it starts again. Okay, we can do that. So what we're going to do is the first thing we want to do with it is we need to make a new variable. So we're going to make a variable, and that variable is going to be how many steps that Scratch Cat takes when it draws those lines for us. So we're going to make a new variable. We're going to call it steps. Cool. So we've got a new variable called steps. And what we want to do is take your set my variable, get the pull down menu, and make it say steps inside set my variable. That's the way. And now drag that across and click it up underneath when up arrow key is pressed. So whenever we start, we want it to set steps to zero. Okay, yeah? Cool. And so now forever, we want it to move step steps. So grab your little orange circle that says steps and plug that into where the 100 is. Okay, turn 76. And now what's the next thing we need it to do? Because at the moment, steps is zero and it's only ever going to be zero. It's never going to change. How do we get it to we change? To we need to go up. How do we get it to change? Yeah. And where would we put it so that every time it draws one line, it changes the number of steps? Where in our code would we need to put it to make it so that it changes every time it comes around that loop? Yeah. And so now when you push up arrow, what happens? Yep. For a second, I thought it looked like a portal. It does look a bit like a portal, doesn't it? As it keeps going, it looks a bit more like a tunnel. That's really cool. And so now it's just going to go forever and ever and ever, isn't it? It's going to keep making that bigger and bigger and bigger for us. 
And that's fine, so push stop. Cool, and so you said you wanted it to stop when it got as big as the screen, yeah? Do you want it to start in the middle of the screen or are you happy with it starting where it is? In the middle of the screen. How would we get it to start in the middle of our screen every time? So talk people through what you're doing. So we, we get to a go zero, zero. So it goes exactly in the middle of the screen. So every time we press the green flag, it's going to go straight back to the middle. Yeah, or we push the up arrow in this case. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's test it now. Push the up arrow and see how it changes. Interesting. Look, it's got one funny wonky line that came from out of there. Okay, we need to put the pen up and uh, then... Uh, nice. Okay, so stop it and let's fix that. So what we want to do is so when we push up arrow, grab a pen up. Because what it's doing is when we push up arrow, wherever it was previously, it's just going to draw a line to the middle and it's going to keep going there. We want it to get rid of that line. So we have pen up at the very beginning of our script. Good. And then we test it now. So that should fix it. It should go to the middle of your screen now. Oh. So that's the other one we wanted. We don't want that one. So stop. Space bar to clear. And up arrow to make your project run. There we go. Look at that. That's cool. That's almost hypnotic, isn't it? <laughs> Can't stop staring at it. Okay, so stop your code. So that's cool. So it's doing one of those. How could you make it even more crazy? What could you do to it next to make that thing look even more crazy? Colors. Yeah, you love playing with colors. Go for it, man. So, what? Where would you put? What? what first of all, what block do you need to make it change color? Set in color two. Yeah. So that will set it to be a single color, right? Which we can totally do. So you can drag that in and set the pen color to be something at the beginning of your script if you want. But remember, if you put it inside your forever loop, it will always set it back to the same color when the loop comes around. And I'm not sure that's what you meant. Because you wanted it to be lots of different colors as it went around, didn't you? Pick random? No. You could have it pick a random color, you could. But there's another way we were doing it earlier. Do you remember which block it was? It's one of the pen blocks. Ah. Change color. Try that one. Plug that into your forever loop. That's it. And then so when we start it now, every time it iterates around that loop, so every time it moves step steps and then turns, it will change color and the next line will be a new color. That's better, isn't it? That's like the cat's flying around and also has like a bucket of paint on its back. Maybe that's what it's like. Maybe someone's dipped his tail in a bucket of paint and as he runs around, he leaves that. That's cool. Okay, so now, you happy with that one? Yeah? Do you want to leave that one as it is and make a new one, or do you want to keep tweaking this one a bit more? Make a different one. A different one. Okay, so what do you want the different one to do? Like have a different shape, mm -hmm. and like make it, like do loads of tiny ones all around the screen. Okay, we can do that. I'm just going to bring this over here. Cool. And so now we can do, so you want it to make a smaller shape, but do lots of them, stamp them all around the yeah. screen. Yeah, okay. So we can totally do that. So let's clean up our blocks a bit so that we've got some workspace. Okay, we'll roll this one down just in case people are wanting to look at our code there. We're going to make a brand new one. So bring a new event in, and this time we'll use a different arrow key to make our different shape. Have cool. We, do we have a down arrow? No, we used up arrow last time, so down arrow is cool. And so what's the first thing we want it to do? We can pretty much assume that the, those things there are the same sort of things we want in our new script. So what's the first thing we want it to do? Put the pen up. Yeah, pen up so that wherever it moves to, it doesn't draw a funny line from wherever it was before. Cool. And then do you want it to go to the middle or do you want it to go somewhere else? What's the plan? Go to the middle. Like yeah, go to the center, okay. Yep, underneath pen up, that's right. So lift the pen and then it will go to the middle because if we didn't have pen up at the top, it would draw a line to the middle of our screen, which we don't really like. It sort of messes up our shape. So pen up, go to the middle, and now what should it do? Turn a certain amount of degrees. Sure. How many degrees? I'm just going to do 30. Okay. So remember, when you only turn 30 degrees, that's going to be quite an open turn, right? So if you think that that is like zero degrees, and that's 90 degrees, so it's going to keep moving in this direction, which is fine. It will just draw a much bigger shape with lots more sides. Okay. If you have something more than 90, it will turn back on itself and we'll start getting some more geometric type of shape. There we go. Okay. So it's going to turn 100 degrees, and then you want it to sort of move, right? 
Yes, um, we will set them up to steps. How many steps? Remember, 10 will make quite a small shape. I mean, you could ask it to move a random number of steps and then it will do something really weird. If you want something that's geometric, we want to have the same number of steps every time. Random. Yeah, okay, so I'd use much bigger numbers than those. I'd probably go from like maybe 30 to 100 or something like that, but it's up to you. But you want slightly bigger numbers so that we can see them well, because 10, we remember, would draw a very small shape, okay? And what should the smallest number be? We don't really want it to be too small. Okay, cool. And then so it's only going to do that once now. So it's going to go to the middle, it's going to turn 100 degrees, and it's going to move 50 to 190 steps, and then it's going to stop. So what do we need it to do? Do a lot. We want it to do a lot. And what do we ask it to do to do a lot of things? When we want it to repeat a lot of times, what do we get it to do? Yeah? And where should that go? Yeah, I would say outside of your, let's sit down on another one, I reckon, because you want your go to the middle to not be in your loop. You don't want it always coming back to the center every time. You want to start in the middle and then do your repeat quite a lot of times. Now, there's one thing missing. If you run that code, you're not going to get a shape. What's missing? The pen down. Yeah, we forgot to put the pen down. So push stop. Stop. Grab the pen. Pen down outside our forever loop. That's the way. And so now, if you run that, we should get a shape. So down arrow. Cool. So that's pretty randomized, isn't it? That's kind of random. And so getting it to do lots and lots of squiggles, and that's pretty cool. But it's all blue squiggles, so it looks like someone's basically just vandalized their book with a pen. <laughs> yeah, so should we change it a bit? Yeah. All right, let's have a look at some of the other things we can do with it. What else can you do with your pen? Because at the moment it's quite a skinny line, isn't it? Make it fatter. We can make it fatter. So what do you want to do? Do you want it to always be fatter, or do you want it to keep getting fatter as it goes along? Getting as it okay, so how would we get it to do that? We want it to change the size of our pen every time it comes around our loop. What would we do to it? Change pen size. Sure, and where would we put it? Would we put it outside our loop or inside our loop if we wanted it to keep changing? Outside. So once it's outside, you'll click it one time, it will change the pen size by one, and then it will draw your picture forever. We kind of want it to change the pen size, then draw. Yeah, I reckon. I'd put it inside the loop. And then, do you want to keep it? Let's, let's see what it does now. So push the down arrow. Whoa. <laughs> now it's really chunky. As soon as it's going to be colouring in, look. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so look, you can see here that the pen size is really big, so stop it. It's like a year one trying to colour in with a very fat pencil. Exactly, right? It's like you're giving a year one kid a massive marker and they're just colouring, or you're giving <laughs> them a huge paintbrush and they're just painting the whole wall now. So I would grab a set pen size to one and pop it back at the top of your script. Right, and that will make sure, yeah, that's fine. So when you click go with this one on the down arrow, it's going to make sure your pen goes back to skinny. Okay, so stop it because we haven't changed our pen size back to one. Your pen size is still massive. Um, so if you push down arrow, it will go back to one and start drawing again, which is fine. Take this out. You can do if you want to. But, I mean, this is that's the script that we've got written there, right? So it's already going to set it back to one here when you push down arrow. Watch it will start skinny again and get fat really fast. So what if we go stop? and we change our pen size by a number less than one. So go down to change pen size and make it 0 0.1. Okay. So when we click down arrow, it will set our pen size to be the one, to so the normal size pen. It will lift it up, move it to the middle, put our pen down, and forever it's going to slowly get bigger. It's going to get only bigger by 0.1 each time. So let's have a look and see how that changes it. Damn it. Okay, so you're still in your 0 0.1, so we hit enter now to get an arrow. Yeah. That's better, isn't it? Takes a little bit longer before it's a massive, huge, fat marker that just colours <laughs> everything in. So now we're just colouring it all in blue. How would you make it change colour all the time? Yep, and pop that inside the loop. You want it in the loop, remember? Everything in the loop is going to happen every time. Ooh. There we go. Now you're talking. Look at that. It's pretty <laughs> cool. So I think I had a screensaver like that somewhere back in the 90s. What's this? What do you mean like a screen saver? Yeah, you don't know what that is, do you? Your screen just goes blank. So it's like when you used to have your computer sit around for a very long time, if you weren't using it, a screen saver would come up. Because if you leave this on your screen all the time, it will end up burning those colours into your monitor and you'll always be able to see the outline of what was left on there for too long. Uh -huh. But most monitors these days are usually pretty good about that not happening, so we don't have to worry about it so much. Cool. So let's stop that.
So cool, let's make a new one. So clean up your blocks. Awesome, let's start a whole new one. This one's gonna be left arrow. I understood. We can do, but we don't want all the code on it. We wanna make new code. I, uh... So when the left arrow key pressed, this will be another new one. Cool, and so for this one, Let's do the similar things that we've done. Let's go to zero, zero, and like so pen up, go to zero, zero, pen down. Mm. Oh, you could have just left it up there, mate. That's okay, you don't need to drag it all the way to the bottom. Because if you roll up a little bit, this way everyone who's watching can still see the code that you've just done, right? And we can build our code next door to the code that you've done there. So anyone who's trying to copy what you just did, they can copy it here, and we'll start with one here, all right? So we go to pen, and we say pen up, and then we want go to zero, zero, all right, let's make it zero, zero. There we go here. And then we can have it do our pen down. So let's go pen down, awesome. And then let's do, hey, do you remember how you did that psychedelic thing we did last time? Do you remember how we did that? Should we show everybody that awesome thing that you made previously, the one that just draws the crazy color lines? All right, so let's do another one. What we want here now is pen up, pen down, uh, and we want it to inside a loop. So let's do uh, repeat until. So we're gonna grab a repeat until, which means it's gonna keep doing this until something happens. And the something we're gonna get it to do is touch touching the edge, edge. okay? Yeah. So you see touching mouse pointer until touching edge, cool. And so it's gonna do this thing right up until the sprite touches the edge and then it's going to stop. So we want it to move and then turn almost completely back on itself. So what is it called when you go up and you turn all the way around and come straight back down? How many degrees in one of those, do you remember? Gonna say 180. Exactly. Well, you would have been right if you said that. So 180 degrees. So let's move a certain number of steps. So move 10 steps, shall we say? Yeah. 10 steps is fine. And then we want it to turn how many degrees? Not quite 180. We want it to be slightly less than that, don't we? So not a full 180. What's just one less than 180? 179. Let's put 179 in. So go turn 179 degrees. Cool. And then inside this, the next thing we want it to do is we want it to change color, don't we? So we want it to go pen and change color by 10. Put that inside your loop. Awesome. So what we've got now is we're going to keep it spinning. It's going to change color every time. It's going to move 10 steps. It's going to turn 100 degrees and take another 10 steps. So let's change that 10 to something a bit bigger so everybody can see what's going to happen. Because when it's 10, it's really tiny. So let's make it 50 and move 10 steps. Move 50 steps. And then it's never going to touch the edge, right? We know that's just going to go forever at this point. But we're going to change something in a minute. That will mean it will get to the edge. So run your code. Push the left arrow. Right. Whoa. Why is it doing that? Why has it done that, do you think? What's, why is it so fat? Um, What's wrong with it? What was the last script we ran? It was this down one here, isn't it, that changes our pen size up to massive. So grab a change or set pen size to one. It's the bottom pen block. And plug that into our script. Set pen size to one. Awesome, so now try left arrow. Okay, and it's going to draw this really cool multicolored freaky circle. It's going to look a freaky circle. Right? So that's cool. So now that it's drawing this crazy multicolored circle over itself all the time, what we can do is if we stop that code now and clear your screen with the space bar, what we want to have it do now is we want to make it change the number of steps that it moves every time. So if you go across to your variables, we've already got a variable called steps. So at the top of your script, you want to set steps. So then it uses a set steps block. Set steps to, at the top of your script, that's it, to one, zero. One. Start at one, okay. And then what we want it to do is we want it to move steps, steps. So grab your steps bubble, the little orange bubble, and plug it into your move 50 block. So now at the moment it's gonna move one step. Right, we want it to move one step, then two steps, then three steps, then four steps. So we want change steps by one let's see it clip that into your loop right down the bottom yep well that'll do it so anywhere will do it it doesn't really matter cool and then you want change steps by one because at the moment it says my variable so it won't change anything so pull down that menu and make it say steps 
And now when we run it, what it's going to do is take one step and then two steps and three steps and four steps and five. It's going to just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it touches the edge. Let's go. Look at that. That's cool. And it's going to keep drawing around on itself and it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger until the sprite touches the edge. And then it's going to stop. What do you want it to do next? Do it again. Start again. So, okay, so what we've got now is we've got it growing a bigger, 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 bigger. And then we want it to do the whole thing again. Right? So everything from go to XY should be inside a forever loop. So grab a forever loop and plug it in between pen up and go to XY zero. That. Up again, that's it. Cool. So now, let's see what happens. Clear it and then left arrow. There it goes. So it's drawing our colourful spiral. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger as our steps is increasing. We can see the number of steps changing in our screen there. It's getting bigger and bigger. And it's going to hit and it's going to start. Well, bam, look, what's it not changed? Why has it not worked? What do we need to do with our steps? Because look, it's still doing massive steps. Look, it's still going up and up and up to 700. How do we get it to start in the middle again with a small spiral? What do we need to have it change? It's, it's going to say step. Yeah, and what does it need to change it back to? Zero. Zero or one is fine. So we put that inside our forever loop there. We can set steps to one. Okay, and then when you try it, try it now. It's going to draw our spiral, it's going to get all the way out, it's going to touch, and then it's going to come back at the beginning with one step and draw another spiral and another spiral, and it's just going to keep drawing them over and over and over again. Right, here it comes, it's going to touch the edge, and then it's going to draw us another one down the middle. And it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, drawing our colours in the spiral. It's going to touch the edge, and it's going to do another one. Awesome. Yeah? And so there's another thing we could probably have it do, you know. Instead of having it go to zero, zero, we could get it go to a random place and do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but then what's going to happen? What's going to happen if we get it too close to the edge? And it starts doing it because it's going to stop when it touches the edge, isn't it? It's going to go back to the middle. Well, it'll go back to another random place, but it might not be as big as this one is. So that's pretty cool. I think that's really awesome. That's good colour. What's another thing we could do? Do you want to do a bunch of stars that appear different all over the screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that'll be the, that'll be the last one we do for today, I reckon, because we're running out of time. So we'll do one more, yeah? And then we'll say bye, everybody. Okay. Yeah, cool. Okay, so let's do a new script. So clean up your code, and this time we'll do right arrow. So bring in a new right arrow event. And right arrow pressed. Ooh. Cool. And so we want it to do all the same things. We want pen up, go to, well, go to a random place, I guess, for this one. So go to our pen. We always want pen up as the first thing so that whenever we run a new script, it doesn't draw a weird line from where it was. Pen up, go to. Go to random place, I reckon. Okay. Cool. And then we want it to go pen down again. So it will start drawing our picture. All right. So they're always the same at the beginning. Pen up, go to where you want, pen down. Yep, and then we want it to repeat a certain number of times this time. So we don't want it to go forever with this one. We want it to go a certain number of times. That's it. And change that number to like something a bit bigger, 20, 25. Okay. And so now inside our repeat loop, we want it to draw a shape and then go somewhere else. Draw a shape, go somewhere else. Draw a shape, go somewhere else, right? So let's draw the shape now. So have it move a number of steps and then turn a number of degrees. And it could be anything you like, really. We always want our steps to be a bit bigger than 10 because otherwise it would just draw us a tiny, tiny shape. Cool, 50 is fine, man. Yeah. Okay, why not? Yeah, doesn't really matter what numbers we use. And then the next one we want to do is add our turn a certain number of degrees. How do you make it turn like the stars? So, well, that really depends, right? So you want it to be slightly, you want it to be more than 90 degrees. You want it to be less than 180 degrees. So any number within there is probably fine, and you'll get different shaped stars. So it starts with either broader or narrower points. So the higher the number is, closer it is to 180, the sharper the points will be. The closer it is to 90, the wider the points will be. Cool. And now if you test that out with the right arrow, so clear it up. There we go. I try it again. Be like that star. 
Yeah. That's cool. So we've got a drawing one, and now what we want it to do is go to another place and draw another one. And go to another place and draw another one, and go to another place and draw another one. How do we get it to do that iteratively? Can't say forever, that's probably Yeah, no, forever's fine. So grab a forever. And clip it around your random position pen down. So above random position. Yep. So now what's going to happen, it's going to lift the pen up, go to a random position, put the pen down, draw a shape, but what, aha, uh -huh. I was just about to say, what's it doing? What's it doing that we don't want? It's, the pen's still down, so it's drawing. Where do we need to tell it to lift the pen up in order to not have the lines joining our stars? There? Yeah. Or at the bottom, maybe, of that, that repeat loop. So pen, pen up at the end of your repeat loop. Oh, uh, yep, that's fine, man. That's fine. That's perfectly fine there. So what we want to do is run your script now. Clear off. Run your script. It's drawing your stars, but they're all blue. So that will draw multicolored stars, right? So every time it draws a line, the line will be a different color. Do you want all your star to be the same color, or do you want them to all be multicolored? Multicolor. Okay, so yeah, pop it into your repeat loop then. And there we go. So if we clear it off now, it'll just keep drawing crazy stars for us. That's cool. Happy with that? Yeah. Is that what you were hoping for it to do? Yeah. Yeah? And so once we've got all these different scripts, we were playing with it before, weren't we? And this is the last thing we'll explain to everyone before we go because we're running out of time. But what we've got here is if you start running that right arrow script, if you run one of your other scripts alongside it, it will start doing wacky and weird things that you probably can't predict. So if you now push another one of your arrow keys, Zach, it will change what it's doing because it's now trying to run two scripts at the same time. So one of our, look, see, that's, look, look, there we go. So now we're running multiple scripts, one that's making our pen get fatter, one that's making our lines get longer, and one that's making the thing iterate from the beginning. So once it gets really big, it's going to start again. Whoa. <laughs> right, so now that we've got a whole bunch of scripts going and we're running them over the top of one another, it can only draw one line at a time. And so what it's doing is it's mixing our scripts together and they're all competing for control of the sprite. And so now we're starting to get really weird and wild stuff happen, but it still looks really cool, right? So if we now stop it and we kill it and we make it massive so everyone can see, right, if you now go... Whoa. It looks like a portal. Does it look like a portal? That's it cool. It looks like it looks like the thing from Madagascar when when he gets shot by like a tramp dart, he sees like crazy stuff. Well, these are all the cool things you've made today, man. That's pretty awesome. There's some pretty psychedelic stuff on here. You always tend to go for the, like weird, wild, and crazy, colourful stuff, don't you? Yeah. You're a big fan of that. Awesome. So that's pretty much everything, everybody. Um. What we'll do now is we'll say goodbye, I think, for this week. Uh, it was really nice to have you along. It was really nice to meet Philip, wasn't it? You got to ask the big boss man a couple of questions, so that's pretty cool. Yeah? Is there anything that you'd like to say to everybody about playing with the pen? Anything you learned about doing it this week that you think would be a good tip for people to remember? Like, with Scratch, it doesn't really matter what you make. Like, it's always... Like, on this, it's... It's going to look cool, like, every time, like, even if it's, like, if you change colour, even if it's all mixed together, it's still going to look really cool. Right, and you, and you can change stuff too, right? If it doesn't look the way you want, you just change a few numbers and have another go and see if it looks better this time, right? And then that's how we do stuff, isn't it? Like yeah. Philip was saying earlier, make the thing, right? So make the thing, just make something, have a go, get something that exists, and then you can change all the parts of it that don't work. It's like... For scratch, if I don't, if for this, like on the practice go in there, um, I got, I didn't really like it, so I just, I just like, I didn't look and just typed a cup like two numbers in and mm -hmm. it popped up to be really cool. Right, like the draw. But that's cool, right? So that, that's, I think that comes back exactly what I was saying before, like what Philip said, make a thing, guys. Like, just have a go at Scratch, produce the base thing, and even if you don't like it, you can always tweak it, you can change it, you can make things different, make them better, you can do all sorts of things in it. But just make the thing, make the first steps, and it makes it much, much easier to carry on from there.
So we'll see you all later, everybody. We'll see you again next week on Wednesday, 2 p.m. Uh, keep making amazing stuff. Share your work with us at rpf.io slash home. Uh, and we'd love to see all the things that you share. We're going to have some new young people on in a few weeks. Some of the entrants to Coolest Projects will be coming on to talk to us and teach me how they made their projects. So tune in for those. Uh, and keep making amazing stuff, guys. We'll catch you later. Say bye, you. Bye. Bye, gang. Bye.